we, we've got this job to do. He's committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. And so we're supposed to be change agents on this earth. So how can we both be content in all situations, but, and, and then do we, how do we pray for change to happen if we're also supposed to be content? Maybe that's the best way to say it. And how can that dichotomy exist? Welcome back, everyone, to The Pursuit. I'm Jeff Hutchin. This is John Sporov, and we have another episode for you today. We're going to dive into some cool stuff, but before we do that, we want to talk a little bit about our presenting sponsor today. Today's episode is being brought to you by our friends over at Trinity Team Real Estate. These guys are in all kinds of stuff. Not only do they do your basic residential um, real estate, but they also handle commercial real estate, HOA management, uh, investment properties, or they, everything that you can imagine under the sun. This is a great team, faith-based organization. They have over 60 years of combined real estate experience within this operation. It's a father and son deal, it which uh, Eric Fritzke and his, cool. his father run this operation. And they do a fantastic job up there. So if you have the desire for any of the things that I listed previously, this is a group that we would strongly encourage you to check out. You can reach them at Trinity Team Real Estate Co. Dot com Trinity Team Real Estate Co. I know you're wondering what I was doing. I was just on that website and uh, checking it out. And, and they're they do speak. They are bilingual. They do speak geek, real estate geek as well as English. In fact, there's a little button there that you can press as well as English. Translates. I would hope. I would hope they yeah. speak English. Yeah, they do very yeah. well. Eric, not so much, but maybe I think the rest of the uh, the team. Okay. Does. <laughs> well, good. Well, man, you've got our topic today. I've got our topic. You know, yeah. I, it's it's interesting. If people could sit behind the scenes and watch us as we prepare for our episodes, it, it's an interesting journey because, quite honestly, we don't even always know what we're going to be talking about as we head into the next episode. I would say we and, usually uh, don't. Not yeah. On, yeah, and uh, and it and it usually and it's really cool when things bubble up that God is dealing with both of us around, and that's a pretty easy confirmation. And then there's some things that's like, yeah. Um, I just feel this strong on my heart today, and and uh, and so I'm just going to tee this up, and we're going to have this conversation, and it's a hard one because this is around the, th- I'll just say it's the theology of hardship, okay? Why it happens, and believe me, you you well you know this better than I, being a former you know pastor, everybody has a reason why hardship comes into their life Mm -hmm. oh it's because of sin it's because god wants us to suffer i mean right there opposite ends of of that spectrum and you could even attach if you wanted to um a a uh, denomination to each one of those Mm -hmm. theologies and you know which one was which as soon as i said it right and there's a thousand things in between that aren't to either one of those extremes but the idea is that somehow through the human experience we have to find reason and meaning to hardship, suffering, and pain in our life. Mm. And and we go to God with that. And what ends up happening is either by what we're told, what we're taught, or what we experience, that sort of codifies in our heart around, oh, this is why we have suffering. Mm. And and once you once you come to terms with why it's happened and 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 realize that God doesn't want it to happen. The next thing is, what do I do about it? Mm. And so I'll just tee it up there and, and ask you to kind of help help us focus maybe a little bit because this is a really big conversation. And and I think you know, book, books have been written, sermons have been preached over the ages around this topic. And we certainly don't, you know, we're not s- saying that this is the absolute truth on it. And, you know, this is just a thought and that's it's around uh, kind of where I'm, where God's, and I feel like He's inviting me uh, to okay. uh, to look at this. So I don't know what what's your thoughts on this well, idea of hardship. First of all, I'm, and, I'm struck I'm struck by the title that you chose, the theology of hardship. I think that's really good because you're right. Each of us each of us has a tendency. We have a filter that when hardship comes upon us, it's where we go to first, right? Mm-hmm. And it, you're right. If if we're if we're rela- if we're raised up in a religious environment, which I was not. We tend to have a religious response mm. to hardship mm-hmm. versus m- maybe a more, I don't know, m- maybe a more 
worldly yeah or maybe a more worldly perspective because mm-hmm. the worldly perspective is uh you know i brought it about myself it's it's my own mistakes it's it's i made these choices yep and all of that is true and that's certainly a component of it but the question then ultimately has to come back to so what is what does god think about it mm-hmm. and as followers of christ how are we to respond to hardship right because that's one of the things we're guaranteed is hardship he said it right there's very in this few world. guarantees in life yeah but that's a guarantee in life. Don't say it. Say the scripture, because everyone, so everyone that may not know it, in this world you will have hardship. But be encouraged. I've overcome the world. That's right. Somewhere. Where so, is it? So, you know, the, the, the problem is oftentimes we step into faith. We step into religion, if that's what you want to call it, the mm-hmm. faith experience, with this idea and mindset, and maybe, well, it is false theology, that, you know what, things are now going to go really well because you've come into a relationship with Christ, because right. you now know God. And so then when that doesn't happen, and when hardship does present itself, then we're at a quandary. Mm Because, wait a minute, I've been told or I believed one thing, but now this is happening in my life. Something's wrong. Either God is messed up, either God lied to me, or I'm so broken and fallen that I'm not worthy of this experience anyway. Right. And and, and one of those answers, I'm going to point out uh, to the audience that you didn't just say the word if, you said the word when, Mm -hmm. right? And that's important. Because Jesus said it in the verse we just cited, that when it when you have hardship, it will happen. Okay, that you have to deal deal with it in some way. But in one of the the ways that you presented, that we sort of reconcile it. Oh, it's because I. The problem is, it's now we put ourselves in the middle of that that box, in the mm-hmm. middle of that that mm-hmm. equation. This says it's all about me, mm-hmm. and uh, and so. Paul says, you know, I've learned to be abased and also to abound. And and so the well, way— First of all, yeah. what, what does it mean to be abased? Abased— That's a religious word. Humiliated, maybe. Humiliated okay. from the standpoint of uh, yeah, abounding in that regard. I, I tend to think of that as being a financial kind of a, a statement that says, hey, I've been rich and I've been poor, mm-hmm. right? Um, but abasing and abounding is, quite frankly, a lot bigger than that. Yeah. Um, well, another way of saying it, just to put it in layman's terms— is there's been times where I've really struggled and mm-hmm. I was I was in need, and there was also mm-hmm. times where I I was I had an abundance. Yeah, and I had a lot. In other yeah. words, t- sometimes life is pretty darn good. Other times it was, it's in the crapper. Yeah, and so he's saying what Paul's saying here at the beginning of that verse. Yeah. I've experienced both, yeah. so I know both of how both of those things feel. But then what does he go on to say in that verse? Yeah, but I've learned in everything to be content. I. Somebody's going to miss. Going to say I didn't quote that right. That's probably true. But the but the spirit of it is again. I, we could look it up. But it's I've le- learned in all things to be content, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and so in all of those scenarios where life is easy and life is hard, I've found a place of contentment. And what I'm what I understand and what I'm experiencing recently is in even the places of hardship, God's will is right in the middle of that. And we can we talked about before being neutral, and there's a lot of overlap in this topic and that, because as you're experiencing hardship, there's this fine line, and this is the question I posed to you earlier, and I'll pose it again, um, you know, on air, is if we are called to be content and satisfied in all s- situations, and also called to be change agents while we're on this earth, right? Because you know if if we weren't supposed to do anything while we're here, the moment we got saved, we'd get, you know, we, Jesus would take us home. I mean, we would just, you know, he, that's what I would do as a loving mm-hmm. father. Like, okay, he's, he's in, you know, before he screws anything up, uh, up, you know, kill him and let's bring him to heaven. Mm-hmm. But we, we've got this job to do. He's committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. And so we're supposed to be change agents on this earth. So how can we both be content in all situations, but, and and then how, do we pr- how do we pray for change to happen if we're also supposed to be content? Maybe that's the best way to mm-hmm. say it. And how can that dichotomy exist? Yeah. You right? know, immediately where my head goes when you ask that question is: as followers of Christ, we're called to be the hope of the world, mm-hmm. right? When when Romans eight talks about all of creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed, the reason why that is is because we live in a fallen and broken world. And this place is not perfect. And by the way, this, this place is not home. We're not to call mm-hmm. it home. We're not to view it as home. So the reason why it leaves us here, I believe, is twofold. One is because the, the story of, of God from Genesis to Revelation 
from the moment that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, he began a process, God did, Mm -hmm. of rebuilding and reestablishing intimacy and relationship with his most favored creation, you and I. And so we see this journey from Genesis to Revelation, and it's not completely perfect once again, like it was in the garden. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be completely perfect once again until we go home, until Jesus comes back to the second coming, and we we reign and rule with him on planet Earth, the new Earth, once again. So the journey is God putting together the pieces of the puzzle that allow us in a fallen and broken evil world, which, by the way, is controlled by the prince of the air, um, is allowing us to walk in victory Mm -hmm. to be a reflection of what is to come. Mm -hmm. That is perfection with him in relationship. And so the reason why hardship comes upon us is there's multiple reasons, right? some, Some people are right. Sometimes we just do stupid stuff. And hardship comes upon us because it's a consequence of walking in disobedience, mm-hmm. right? And just stuff happens to us. But then there's that there is the bumper sticker that S H I T happens, yep. right? When this we, it's a result of living in a fallen, broken world, and the fact that people around us are broken, and this place is broken, and sometimes we just catch the splatter yeah. of somebody else's mistakes, right? I- Maybe I'd even add a third category of that, which is that we are being preyed upon. There is an enemy that is roaring, uh, you know, goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may That's devour. Right. And, and so there is, there is the fact that, yep, crap just happens. The fact that we do stupid things, but there's also an active enemy that is looking for every opportunity to, in, to inject, um, uh, you know, his venom into our life around, you know, um, uh, we've talked about this before. I'm, I'm thinking about whether we should even go down this path, but we've talked about how he observes yeah, and yeah. uses our words yeah. and, and all of those sorts of things. And, and we could talk about that, but we've already done that in previous episodes. But just wanted to add, yeah. there could be a, there is that third component, which is we are actively being preyed upon. Sure. So all those things are true, and that's why hardships come upon us. The question then is, how do we have the mindset of Paul? Yeah. How can we get to a place where we can say, you know what? I'm in content. I'm very content when I am in want, and I've, I'm, I'm very content when I have abundance. W- when things are, are not good, I'm content. When things are great, I'm content. How can I continue to walk in such a way that's going to be obedient to the will of the Father, but also be a testimony and a witness to those that don't know him, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so that's that's a big part of the journey. There's there's a work that's being done in us, mm-hmm. right? There's that there's that um, ironing, sharpening iron that takes place between relationship, between you, you trying to help me become a better follower of Christ and a, and a son yeah. of God and all that kind of stuff. So there's definitely a work that's going on with inside of us, but there's also a work that's a reflection, should be a reflection of the kingdom operating and functioning in me so when other people see me or they see you, they say, you know what, there's something different. Yeah. And that difference is we're operating in a kingdom mindset and a kingdom mentality. And I think that's kind of where you want to go today mm-hmm. is what does that look like to be content? And how do we pray in the midst of that struggle, in the midst yeah. of that challenge? Yeah. And this is one, maybe this is why uh, this is such a personal thing to me. And I, and I hope that this is relevant to, to our watchers and listeners. Because I tend to, even though God has proven himself a thousand times and a thousand and one and right times before, okay, the thousand and second situation that happens, I tend to be one that overreacts. Mm-hmm. You know this about mm-hmm. me, right? And, um, and so God has been working on me around this idea because can I, before I know the outcome, be content in the middle of it? That's the question, I think. Before you know how this is going to work out, can you com- be content to know that God's got your back, right? And and instead of while you're in the middle of it, thinking about, oh, was it something I did? And going into what we call the orphan mentality mm-hmm. that says everything that I get bad is because I'm so bad. Mm-hmm. And everything I get good is, well, I'm pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. I earned it. Mm-hmm. Both of those equally evil, mm-hmm. okay? Um, before we start to go dissect it and figure out in the middle of it why it's happening, can we come to a place of saying, it is happening and God has my back? So you have a really good example of this. It just happened sure. this weekend. Yeah. 
And it's amazing how when, when God's working on your heart on stuff, and then he goes, you know what, I'm going to test you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to see how this stuff yeah. works. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell it real quick, real quick, that uh, Wednesday night, so I, I had for work, I had a, uh, an important uh, trip that, uh, that was planned and I was looking forward to. Um, I had the opportunity for advancing uh, in this, in this mm-hmm. job. Um, and I got an email Wednesday night, 1030, that says, um, you've been exposed uh, to COVID and, um, and, you know, I've been vaccinated. And, uh, and so before uh, you're allowed to go on this trip, by noon tomorrow, we need a negative test. Otherwise, we're, everything has been canceled. And so, you know, that next morning, of course, here in Denver. So let yeah, me stop you there. Yeah. So w- when you got that email, yeah. where'd, your, where'd your mind go? Panic. Panic. Like, what were you thinking? It's over. It, it, you know, this opportunity for promotion, um, exposure, visibility, all of that is now uh, going to be potentially ruined. Because not that I was feeling symptomatic or had any uh, uncertainty about whether I, I got COVID again, um, but more because there are no testing kits available in Denver, Colorado, okay, right now. <laughs> Every drugstore in this area, even down in Colorado Springs. Uh, nobody has it. And so, and all the hospitals have the three day test. They don't have the rapid test. And so anyway, not to go. Okay, into, yeah. no, so stop there. So, cause we're, cause we're still in the middle of the story, right? Still we don't know the answer. We don't know what, what's going to happen. That's fair. And yeah. so I think it's important that we break this down and understand how you're feeling because there are symptoms. What you're describing are symptoms of something you've already pointed out about yourself. You have a tendency to I jump do. to a certain place. I do. So let me guess. Some of your thoughts that were going through your mind was, uh, this isn't going to happen. I'm not going to be able to go on this trip. There goes my advancement. You know what? I probably I probably shouldn't be there anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're not good enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, all these thoughts. Mm-hmm. Why is it? Mm-hmm. Why is it? Because you're not alone in this. We all battle this to certain degrees. Why is it that that's our default? I think the enemy wants us to be so focused on us. We get so wrapped up in ourselves that we're of no use to anybody else, right? And you said it earlier. I wanted to point it out, and then we got into the story. But you said the word others. You were talking about others. And what I'm realizing, um, and by the way, I don't want to ruin the story, but in the end, I lived. Okay. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. I, I, I didn't want to just leave that cliffhanger out there. We might want to edit that out because that's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but there, there is this tendency um, to make these things about about us and and they're really not they're really not is what i'm i'm discovering well I, and i think again i think that feeling is very natural and i think that's and god knows that about us you know he he, he wired us in such a way um that we we tend to be pretty self-focused that's why scripture talks over and over about you know dying to self and and, and living your life for others living your life for the lord and that sort of thing but I think, you know, it's, it's a natural feeling to go there. Mm-hmm. Um, but but what's, what's amazing to me is how often we fall into that trap of, well, it's, since it's not what I want, mm-hmm. it must be bad, right? Because clearly what you wanted was I want to go on this trip because it's a chance for me to advance. Mm-hmm. Probably not stopping to think very long to think, but is that what God wants? Mm-hmm. Is that where God wants me to be? Is this the path he wants me to be on? Right. And oh, by the way, is God big enough? Is he bigger than COVID? Or right. is God going to go, oh man, I really had plans for you to do this, but yeah. this COVID thing got in the way and sorry, yeah. John, it messed it, messed it up and or, or, sucks for you. And, or even more about us to say, like he's got healing hidden back here behind his back. And he's and he's up there in heaven going, come on, John, Just say that incantation, yeah. incantation, right? I don't mean to, but say it so that I can operate in you. Yeah. Are we? Is he that small? Right. Is he really that small, or am I that big? Mm-hmm. That says. I, he's waiting for me to just pray that prayer or can it just be that I know that in the middle of whatever circumstance I'm in, he's in my life in that moment. I'm in the perfect will of God, perfect will of yeah. God being sheltered in spite of the storm around me, right? All of those things. Can I be like Jesus asleep in the boat while the, while the thunderstorm is raging yeah. Yeah. asleep in the boat? 
And um, so continue with the okay, story. Okay, so back to the story. So, so now you're freaking out. Yeah, you're can't. calling everywhere on the planet trying to find a kit. Yep, um, found one about an hour and a half up the road in uh, in in Fort Collins. Asked the wonderful lady. Uh, Did you buy it on the black market or yeah. like some guy on the street corner? Walgreens. With a jacket apes. Yeah, over here. <laughs> Walgreens on, on Harmony Road or something <laughs> in Fort Collins. Walgreens, not okay. off the black market. I, don't, I wouldn't even know how to do that. Yeah. I'd have to call you. <laughs> yeah. Hutch, how do I buy something yeah, off the black exactly, market? Exactly. <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get a DVD player. <laughs> so, DVD a Sony, player. A Sony Discman. I got a Sony Discman. <laughs> I need Ridiculous. one. Ridiculous. Okay, so <laughs> so uh, a colleague uh, of mine who was uh, is supposed to go on the same trip and is in the same situation said, "You're not going to believe this, man. I found this place. They do rapid testing. I got an appointment. I got you an appointment. We're going to make it under the deadline. Okay, go in there. And uh, but it so before I left to go to that appointment, Holy like Spirit told, showed up. Yeah, Holy Spirit, through AKA the, the voice of my Tara. wife. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny how often." The, the Holy Spirit comes disguised in the voice of your wife, I isn't it? I think you might have married Holy Spirit. Yeah, actually. right? No, no, well, so did you. It. So did you. Yeah. God blessed us, man. And, uh, and, and I said to her this. I said, hey, oh, grab my keys, and last thing I need to do before I go out the door is say that incantation. Say the magic yeah, prayer. Yeah, the magic word. And I don't mean, I'm not putting prayer down. Prayer is, yeah. right? We're going to talk about that. But I, if I realized I was already in a place of prayer. What is prayer? Communion with the Father. That's yeah. a whole other. We need to talk about that. We'll do it another time. Um, unless you want to seven minutes go. Through. So I said to her, would you pray for me before I head off and get this test? And she's all sure. What are we? Pray, what do you want to pray about? Like what? What answer? Like what are we? What are we asking yeah, what for are we, here? And, and I looked at her and she she had that look like it's sort of a rhetorical question. Like nudge, nudge. Are you following me on this? What yeah. do you want to pray? Yeah. And I go, <laughs> I just laughed. You're so right. <laughs> God is with me. And in that moment, enter so, neutrality. So what is it? So what is this? Okay, perfect. Yeah. So you said in that moment, you entered into a place of neutrality. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That, that's, a, that's a beautiful word. We're going to go. Actually. Yeah, we're going to go back. It, it, rewind it. If you haven't watched the last episode, go check that out. Um, we talked about it a little bit, but enter neutrality. Neutrality was the freedom that irrespective of which outcome is going to happen i'm good that's god's will like yeah. i'm in the middle of yeah. god's will in the and if he says yes or he says no father i'm good if if i'm staying home this weekend and not going on that trip man it's going to be an amazing weekend and if i go man it's going to be an amazing weekend what freedom there is in that and there is such peace in that, we talked about neutrality. I mean, you, you're experiencing no, I think it's some beautiful. of this as well. I think it's beautiful. It's and it's it's getting to that place that says, you know what? Yes, I know what I want. I think I know what I want. I I'm excited about this. I really, really, this is this is what I've been targeting for a long time. However, not my will, but your will be done. All right, that sounds familiar. Yeah, because that was Christ's prayer in the garden. And so, what's interesting though, and, and you pose the question is is what's what's the role of prayer in this you know do we just mm -hmm. flippantly say i'm not going to communicate these things to god because mm. he's in control anyway mm -hmm. so that if that's the point if that's if that's true then what's the purpose of prayer anyway yeah why why would he even want to hear from us if he's going to do what he's going to do anyway and so that's what i think is so mysterious and it powerful is. about prayer is that I, I think i think there's things there's examples in in scripture of where people that prayed actually changed God's direction. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say change the mind of God. I don't know if it's that simple to say it that way, but you know what I'm saying yep. is because of their prayer, because of their decision to get involved in this process, God said, you know what? I've now considered that and I'm going to show my mercy, my grace yeah. in this particular situation. Yep. And so there's certainly proof in scripture that, that God wants to hear from his kids. But I think what you're saying here more than anything is not, you know what? I'm not going to pray. Right. Because God's going to do it and God's got me. I think what happened inside of you, because you're right, during that whole conversation, when we're having a, a conversation with another spirit-filled believer, there's another person involved in this conversation. That's prayer. Yeah. So when you and Tara were talking, yeah. that is a form of prayer. Agreed. It's not you have to get down on your knees and right. put your hands together right. and bow your head in order for prayer to be you know, listened and, and heard. 
The fact is, in that fellowship, because you guys are one in spirit, by the way, mm. as, as husband and wife, in that communication that the two of you had, you're in communication with the Father. The Holy Spirit is confirming and affirming what is being said, and that's what you said. You go, no doubt. you, you kind of laughed, you chuckled, and you yeah. said, yeah, yeah, exactly. Guess what you just did there? You confirmed and affirmed something in the heavenlies. Mm. And what you did in that moment is you got to that place of neutrality, which is beautiful. That's what we're called to do as sons, mm. is to say, you know what, I'm okay with whatever the result is. You don't think God knows what your desire is? Of course he does. Right. He knows what you want. You don't have to express that to him. The fact is, you got to that place that said, it's okay. Jesus himself, we referred to it, in the garden. If it didn't matter, do you think he would have had that prayer? Man, He it, just would have said, God's got this. I guess I'm going to have yeah. to just whatever. No, no, he went and he poured his heart out before his father. And he said, God, this is what I want. Yeah. But at he, the end of the day, I'm neutral. Uh, it, I'm neutral. I, I think it's beautiful because getting to a place of neutrality sometimes is an easier thing to do when when the consequences or the or the thing to be had is at stake it is not so great, yeah. right? Um, but but he showed us that even when his life was at stake, like you're pointing out, he had the moment of neutrality during prayer that said, "Father, I don't want to do this," and then enter neutrality. Yeah, right. But nevertheless, your will, not mine. And then, okay, we can do this. Like, it's, it's going to happen, okay? And so, yeah, there, there, prayer is so important as it, as it relates to that. And I think here's the other thing about it that Jesus is it's just occurring to me now. The Garden of Gethsemane kind of uh, situation shows us about the pattern of this prayer around hardship and getting to a place of neutrality. During that transaction— what gets exposed is our hearts. Yeah. God bubbled something up within me, and at the it what I was confronted with was not, is he going to send me to the left or to the right? But what bubbled up was, do I trust him? Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of this thing. The whole point of it was not so much is he going to go this weekend or not. Oh my gosh, as he's you know with an eraser in heaven with the you know the the Gantt chart of my life, and oh if he doesn't go left, then how am I going to right? That's ridiculous. He's got it all worked out. The point of it that he cares about is is our hearts. Yeah. And so, so to to finish that that story, I guess in a real quick moment here is is, um, and I think this is important because it highlights the the idea of this is not even about me. Is that um, it tested you know negative and submitted the test just in time? Went on this trip. There's some other other hardship that, by the way, that happened on that uh, on that trip. While I once I got there, that we, we'll just maybe save for another time or another conversation. Um, but there were some active things that were trying to get me um, focused on self and not on God and not trusting Him. And what ended up happening is he put me in a situation in a conversation that I got to pray for this man that I would have never ever met had hardship not entered the scene and neutrality not been the, kingdom. the yeah the, that's kingdom yeah yeah the kingdom advance yeah the kingdom advance in spite of um our wants and our desires when we choose to surrender when we choose to submit things will happen and yeah. unfold and occur in our lives that we could have never dreamed or ever imagined yeah and and you know what the 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 stage event that happened the visibility was wonderful, yeah. was better than I could have ever imagined. But what I came back here with today is there's a man that I won't call, but is, I know his name. You know, we, it, we spent an hour together. Yeah. There's a man in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I, where I went, that God had appointments set for me with that literally the event that I thought it was all about had nothing to do with this weekend. Mm. That was just the icing on the cake. It was about favor. this, this guy. Do me a favor. Pull yeah. up um, on your Bible app, because I have new, new International Version, New King James Version. Pull up New King James for me. Yep. And I want you to pull up 1 John 5. And we're going to look specifically at verse 3 through 5. And I want you to read the New, Kingdoms, uh, new King so James Version. I was hoping you were going to ask me that, because I've got new glasses, and I just want to try them out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Uh, for for this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. Okay, stop there. Mm. The question we're going to answer is: What gives us the ability to claim victory in this world? Okay, when hardships come, 
mm-hmm. when challenges come, when we're faced with adversity of, of whatever kind it is, the question we're going to answer here mm-hmm. is how do we overcome victory in this world? Or how do we, how do we, how we, how are we victorious how we, in this yeah. world? Mm-hmm. How do we overcome this world? Mm-hmm. Keep reading. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that's overcome the world, our faith. Stop right there. So the key to having victory in times of trouble, in the times of hardship, in the times of adversity, is our faith. Mm-hmm. It's our faith. No doubt. That's good. And that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Are you willing to trust him when things look dire, when things don't seem to be unfolding as you desire them to be, or when you're in the midst of, of, of even great blessing, mm-hmm. right, that God has put upon you, are you willing, even in those moments, to trust him and say, you know what, um, this isn't a result of me just being a great guy and God's rewarding me. The result is the fact that God is blessing me because I'm a child and because I'm obeying his commands, okay? He wants to bless his kids. Are you still going to trust him when things are in abundance just as much as you're going to trust him when things are in, uh, in mm-hmm. times of challenge? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm thinking about that scripture and where, you know, I've got that highlighted in my Bible and, and thinking about how my understanding of that passage has evolved over the years. And I would have said before that this is the victory that's overcome the world, even our faith, which is a statement around to be a change agent, use the muscle and power of faith, which is commanding and speaking and, you know, mm-hmm. doing those things. And now the other side of that, it, it, a very, so let me, summarize that by saying a very active and proactive faith and the other side of that is a very passive faith the faith that well god's got the best for me in 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 case sera sera whatever will be will be mm-hmm. i don't think i'm i'm in either extreme no, no. I, it's part it's in the middle because i do believe in the power of prayer i absolutely do as it relates to spiritual warfare firsthand experience with that right um and, and being active in our prayers, but neutral with regard to knowing that God's in control of everything. And here, Is that fair? Here, yes. And here's what your, ne- your neutrality brings. What your neutrality brings is eyes and ears willing to hear, if you go read the first part of that, eyes and ears that are willing to hear and listen to yeah. be able to then act upon what it is the Father is telling you to do in the moment. Right? There are going to be times where he's going to tell you to look at the dead body and tell it to rise up. Yes. There's going to be times where he doesn't. Jesus did not heal every dead person he came across. It's true. He healed Lazarus. Why? Mm. Because the Father told him to. Right? That's good. So, So what that faith requires is the ability to listen and hear the voice of the Father, to then have the courage and strength and faith to obey what it is he calls you to do in that moment. And sometimes it's nothing. Sometimes it's sit still and watch. Be still. What I'm going to do. Yep. And sometimes it's get up and go. What is required in that is the discerning spirit to be able to know which is it he's he calling me to, and then having the faith and the courage to act it out. Cool? Good cool. word, man. Cool. Hey, it's great to see everybody today. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Pursuit. Stay with us. Who knows where we're going to go next Tuesday? Who knows? We have no idea, but join us and find out. And we'll see you next time on The Pursuit.